All right, guys, uh, so this is the extension video uh, for those of you who kind of have a pretty good grasp about what we've been working on in class. This isn't going to be on the quizzes or tests, but it is some fun, challenging problems, okay? And we're going to start this by talking about probability, okay, which is an idea of there's a chance that something is going to happen, right? So if I take a coin and I flip it, there's a chance that it's going to land on heads, right? You should know if I flip a coin, it's kind of a 50-50 chance, right? I, can, I take my coin, I can flip it, I can either get a heads, or I can get a tails, right? There's two possible things that I can flip, and one of those things is a heads, right? So there's a one half chance or a one half probability that I flip heads. Same thing down here with tails, okay? The idea stays the same when we start talking about probability uh, in, other, uh, in other ways as well, right? If the, 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 the weatherman says that there's an 80% chance it's going to rain today, there's two outcomes. Same thing as there were two outcomes here. It's either going to rain or it's not going to rain. Okay? And there's an 80% chance of rain. That means that there's going to be 20% left over for no rain. Okay? And we're going to be using these trees to model more difficult problems. Now this is the type of problem that's a little more difficult than maybe the probability problems you've tried in the past. The reason we're having you do this, this is on the ACT. So it might not be part of geometry, but it's helping you get a better score on the ACT. So we're gonna start by building a probability tree to help us make sense of this. What is the probability that you roll a five on a dice and you flip tails on a coin? We're not talking about the probability of one thing, we're talking the probability of two things. And we call this compound probability. So let's model the first thing. What is the probability you roll a five on a dice? So you, can, you have two options when you roll your dice. You will either roll that five, or you will roll not a five. You might get a one, two, three, four, or six. Now, I just counted all the different options you can get. There are six different options on a dice, so both of these will be out of six. There's only one five on a dice. There's only a one-sixth chance you're gonna roll that five. Now, there are five options that aren't a five. One, two, three, four, and six. So there are five sixths chance that you're not gonna get a five. But I don't wanna know just about rolling a five I want to also know and flipping a tails on a coin. So I'm going to go to the end of both of my trees here, because let's say I do roll a five. Well, after rolling a five, I have a two options when I flip my coin. I'm either going to get a heads or I'm going to get a tails. I see that there are two options, so the probability of either of those will be out of two. And there's only one way I can get a heads when I flip a coin. There's only one way to get a tails. Now we can't ignore this part either. There are, if we get a not five, we're still going to flip the coin and you still have the option of heads or tails. And the probability is the same as up here. It's still a half chance you get a heads and a half chance you get a tails. Now we have all of the fractions we need to find the compound probability that both rolling a five and getting a tails happens. But we got to figure out what we're gonna do. First, I'm gonna highlight the trail of what I'm looking for. First, we're looking for a five, and then we're looking for a tails. And I see both of my fractions here, and that's what I need to find the compound probability. When we find the compound probability, you multiply the chance of both events happening. So I'm gonna take 1 sixth, and I'm gonna multiply it times 1 half. When we multiply fractions, we do the numerator times the numerator, the denominator times the denominator, one times one is one, six times two is 12. Now usually when we talk about probability, we need to turn this into a decimal than a percent. So I'm going to take one divided by 12, one divided by 12, and I'm going to get 0 0.083 repeating. 
And now I need to multiply that times 100, or the shortcut for a decimal to percent, is move your decimal over twice, and we end up with an 8.3% chance that you will both roll a five and then flip tails on a coin. Okay guys, just another problem, same sort of idea as Mr. Baki did in that last one, just to get us a little bit more practice, all right? This one starts with, you accidentally dropped a coin from the top of nine stairs. What is the probability that it will land on the eighth stair, tails up, okay? So there's two different events in here, same thing as before. The first one, it needs to land on the eighth step, okay? And the second one, it needs to land tails up. So we're gonna start our probability tree with the eighth step, right? It can either land on the eighth step, or it can land on the first, the second, right? Any of those other steps. So we're just gonna say not the eighth step, okay? There's nine total stairs, and only one of those nine stairs is the eighth step. The rest of them are not that step, okay? Uh, so there's only a one in nine chance that it lands on the eighth step at all, okay? Uh, but that's not even what the problem's asking, right? It wants it to land on the eighth step and land tails up, okay? So we need to add a couple more branches to this tree, okay? When that coin lands, it can either land heads up or it can land tails up. Same thing down here. It can land heads up or it can land tails up, right? And when you flip a coin, it's a one in two chance. So all of these fractions are going to be Now we're going to get out our highlighter, and we're going to look for the trail of what we're looking for, right? It needs to land on the eighth step. There's the eighth step, and it needs to land tails up, which is going to be this pathway here, okay? Uh, and now we found our pathway, and we know what fractions we have to use to find the compound probability, like Mr. Baki mentioned before. We need to take those two fractions, and we need to multiply them. 1 over 9 times... 1 over 2. We multiply the tops together, our numerators, we multiply the denominators straight across, and we get 1 over 18. Okay? And that's fine. That's our answer. But usually when we talk about probability, we use decimals or percents. Okay? So we're going to grab out our calculator. Okay? 1 divided by 18 gives us 0 0.055. 0.055, okay? And that shortcut Mr. Baki used, we need to take the decimal point, move it over two spots, and we find that there is a 5.5% chance that when we flip a coin down those stairs, it lands on the eighth step and it lands tails up. 